Good morning guys and welcome back. It's Lonnie and thanks for watching part two of my short series on how to grow dragon fruit. Um, if you saw part one, it was very simple. It was just me getting the dragon fruit cuttings and then just cutting them and letting them harden off so then that way I could regrow them. Part two is going to be pretty much about water, support, and soil. So water. You don't really need to know about the water until you know what you're going to be putting in to the soil. So, <clears throat> excuse my voice, um, there's two, or I'm sorry, there's three parts of the soil that I added in here. And pretty much it is a one third of just regular vegetable flower bed soil that you'll see at the store then the second um, second portion was cactus soil and then the third was peat moss again you can find other um, variations of how to do these um, portions but I decided with those three just because two of the three it was um, recommended by Kevin from Epic Gardening and like I said in the previous video I am following his uh, method on pretty much propagating dragon fruit and he had great success so I'm gonna try to do that here in El Paso so again it's peat moss cactus soil and um, it was just a regular regular garden soil I mixed it all up together and then I just put it in here I got these pots right here these are 15 gallon pots from Aaron Brightly when he delivered my Italian Cyprus um, a week ago and I'm just gonna keep a couple of those and just so you guys know if you don't want to keep all the nursery pots that you have just go ahead and uh, let everybody know in the garden group on Facebook El Paso gardening well it's colored a desert with Lonnie U. Richardson El Paso gardening um, and just let them know and people will come and pick them up for you so then they could recycle and reuse them for their gardening needs so you know feel free to let people know about that so it doesn't all end up in the dump okay that was just my little environmental friendly announcement for the week but anyways back to that so once I mixed it all up I put this support beam this is a stake that I got from a previous plant that I purchased a while ago and I just kept it just in case I need to use it for something and so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and use it for the support beam I know that um, most people they'll have a support beam and then once they get to a certain height they have some kind of a like a square like umbrella thing on top and so that way the dragon fruit could grow up and then pretty much essentially just fall over it and then just hangs on it but I haven't yet um, figured out what I'm gonna be using so as of right now I mean my my cuttings are so tiny that I think this is gonna be fine for a while my main goal is to just uh, keep it thriving and growing and then when I get to that point I'll get to that point same thing here this um, I have from a previous plant these came with the cutting so I just tied them all up with some rope that I had and this one has the same mixture I know I have five pots here but these other pots have some elephant ears growing in them um, so I just thought it would look really nice on my side yard to have some tropical effects going on here um, when it comes back to <clears throat> the mixture of the soil cactus uh, soil was used just because it's going to help with drainage um, while providing nutrients for cactus or cacti um, while regular garden soil was used to also help with just the nutrition aspect and then the peat moss was used for water retention um, as you can see how the light just hit because that sun just hit the side of my house okay behind me is east and so it's gonna get that morning sun 
but then it's going to end up getting that afternoon shade and that's going to ultimately help me in the summer because i read up that dragon fruit they love the heat but at the same time they can't go past anything um, pushing 90 degrees correct me if i'm wrong um, but several of the sites that i did look at that's what they said obviously the ones that do handle extreme heat it's a different ver um, variant of the dragon fruit i'm not sure exactly which one i got so i thought it would be better to you know safe than sorry um and i just wanted to make sure that i'm doing everything i can to give them the right amount of sunlight but not burning them while they're trying to grow here in el paso but pretty much that's it for now and then part three will come up soon and it'll be just me transplanting my cute little cute 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 little baby dragon fruit look at them they're so cute all right that's it for now talk to you later bye just a quick mention so i am watering my soil now as you can see it's a little wet but i wanted you guys to see something you want to make sure that the water is thoroughly saturating the soil just because it looks like it's cooling like for instance look it's got that much water in it doesn't mean that that was a good enough drink you got to make sure that it's completely going through the soil and my indicator that it all the soil in this pot is fully moistened is the water will start coming out here I already filled this twice and no water has yet to come out of that drainage hole so I know that I'm gonna have to keep on doing this until it's completely saturated I just wanted to mention that because I know that a lot of people, especially in the deserts, like, well, I already filled my pots up with water. It was filled to the top and my plant's still dead or is drying out. Can you please help me? Well, one of the reasons why is because you're not letting the water fully moisten the soil. So just go ahead and do that and your life will be a little bit better. I promise you guys. Okay. That was it. <laughs>